Hi guys, it's Hayden and today I'm going to be going over how I got into the University of Michigan. I actually am attending the University of Michigan in the fall so I'm very excited and I still like pinch myself that I'm going here. I have a college decision reaction video and a lot of you guys asked about how I got into Michigan, like what my stats were. So I'm gonna be going over all that right now of what my stats are and how I personally think I got into Michigan. Obviously, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like the stats don't always speak for the, or like they can kind of speak for themselves, but it doesn't always show what the admissions officer saw in my application. And so in the fall time, I'm actually planning on going and reading my admissions file, which you can do at Michigan. Not all schools do that, but I'll probably be making an updated video about how that went and what exactly the admissions file said. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below and also subscribe down below if you haven't yet. I will be posting a lot of Michigan content like most of my YouTube will probably become Michigan stuff in the fall time. And so now I'm finally gonna get into my stats. I'm gonna start off with saying that, how I, what I applied. So I'm an out-of-state student. I'm specifically from California. Demographically, California and Florida, I think are like the most represented states. Oh, and New York outside of Michigan. And so I don't know if that helps or, or if it lowered my possibility of getting into the school. So just keep that in mind. I'm an out-of-state student. I hear that the in-state, so out-of-state, from my understanding, it's like a 15% acceptance rate and in-state it's like 35 or 40%, I think. On top of that, I applied for LSA. I applied there because I wanted to be in the Ross Business School, but I got waitlisted there and ended up getting rejected after my waitlist at Ross, which I didn't even know you could get waitlisted. But that's kind of where I was at with that process. Also, oh, the other thing is that I applied early action and I didn't get in early action, so I submitted a letter of continued interest. I'll kind of go over the process of it, like when I submitted it and then the, the letter of continued interest, but I also feel like that really plays a part in me getting into the school. Another thing that I wanna mention before I go into all the stats is that I did not submit an SAT score, an ACT score, because in California, I just couldn't. And since it was test optional, I felt like I could do that. So I'm gonna start off with my APs and GPA, like just the actual like number stats. When I applied, I had a 3.91 unweighted and a 4.1 weighted. And then I think it went to like a, a 3.93 for the winter time um, because they get your transcript for the fall semester. And I think I got to a 4.17 weighted. So ultimately I feel like that's what, like the progression definitely helped me. To get those weighted GPAs, I ended up taking seven APs in my time of my schooling. And I also took two college classes, which I'll go into in a little bit those were also weighted. So technically I took nine weighted classes throughout high school. So for my APs, I took sophomore year AP World History and I got a four on that exam. And then my junior year, I took AP Literature, which I know sounds weird because most people take AP Lit their senior year, but my school did it junior year. And I got a three on that exam. I also took AP Biology. I also got a three on that exam and I took a push or AP US History. And I also got a three on that exam. That entire year I got threes. I actually have a video of my reaction to that if you wanna see. It was a weird year because the whole exam changed. And at the time I was really worried that that was gonna like impact college because as I said earlier at the beginning, I didn't submit an SAT and ACT score. So I was worried that those AP test scores would be more heavily looked at and that that wouldn't show that I'm like as strong of a student because even though threes and fours are three threes and one four is all passing grades, it's still like to go from a four my sophomore year into three threes. I do feel like colleges were understanding that COVID messed a lot of things up. And then my senior year, I took five weighted classes. So I took AP language and composition. I took government and politics and then I took AP statistics. And then I took two other weighted classes, which were the dual enrollment courses through a local community college. 
and that was social media marketing and small business entrepreneurship, which both were like businessy classes. I really enjoyed those and it helped with my way to GPA. Had I been able to take those earlier in high school, I would have. I do think that those, for one of those classes, I actually was able to write about that in my letter of continued interest that I got an A in a college level course. And I feel like that helps so much because yeah, your AP tests matter and stuff, but it obviously shows that I can excel and do well in college level courses. The next part I'm gonna talk about is what I did for extracurriculars. One thing that I think matters so much to Michigan is leadership. They, they do have their saying leaders and best. So I was involved in ASB, which is a associated student body where I was the sophomore class vice president, the junior class president, and then I was the ASB president. So I was in charge of the whole program and I led like business meetings. For my two recommendations that I sent in, I had my ASB teacher write that because I had had her for three years and talked about like the different things that I did on my campus. And I think that shows so much like an impact that I can make on Michigan and how involved I am. They really want students that scream school spirit because their school, like that is just, they want you to have pride in their school and to make sure that students are prideful. They want kids that are in leadership and like school pride and all that kind of stuff. The next thing I talked about was the drama club. So I was in the drama club for all four years and I was actually on the executive board for three of those four years of which I was at, I was voted on by my peers to be on the exec board. Sophomore year, I was the only sophomore that was voted on. I was historian that year. And then the next year I was the director of activities or co-director of activities. There was two of us that did that role. And then my senior year, I was the vice president of the drama club. So again, a lot of leadership. And then I also did the spring musical and I was prop crew lead. So there's different like leads. So I basically was in charge of leading everyone that did all the props. For sports, I played varsity tennis. I was uh, at the time going to be the varsity captain. So I wrote that on my application. Because of COVID, I didn't end up playing. I also worked at Legoland for two years of which I got a few different awards for my bosses. I was also a link crew member. So we work with like incorporating the freshmen into our school. And so I did that junior and senior year. Senior year, I was a link crew commissioner. Then I also was on the social media marketing team for like six weeks. It was like this program that my school did. Only a few students were selected by administrators and I was on that team and we worked with actual people that worked in marketing and learned how to like market to our school and kind of create more unity on our campus. And then I put babysitting down and every summer I would do this summer camp where I was a camp counselor coaching young children. I think that I didn't use all the slots. I think that was like eight or nine that I listed. And then it asks for awards. And so I got the AP Scholar with Honors Award for two years in a row, I got the director's award from my director for drama. I was also a Carson Scholar recipient. And then I was also on the National Honor Society junior and senior year. I'm gonna talk about my essays, including the letter of continued interest. So for my essays, this year they only made us write two. Well, actually really it's like three because there's the Common App essay. So I actually am gonna do a video reading through my Common App essays because I think that would be very helpful and informative, but I'll kind of give you the topics of them. So for my Common App essay, I chose one about like looking through at Legoland in a different lens. So when I was younger, I used to look at it in a different land and lens. And then when I worked there, I realized that it's very similar to the actual world, world we live in and that you can make anything like into a fantasy land through imagination pretty much. And I was really proud of that because I knew no student was able to write that exact essay because first off, there's only two states that have a Legoland. And it's most people just probably wouldn't talk about a theme park that they work at as their common app. And then the other essay I did was like, what community? I think you can choose from a, different, a few different ones, but I chose like, what community do I belong in? And I actually talked about being an oldest child and how that has shaped me into the person I am today. And I t typically tend to gravitate towards other old, eldest children because we all have like that responsibility and like 
need for leadership in our lives because we've always grown up having to do that. And then for the last essay, it's the Why Michigan essay. And so I talked about the business program. I talked about LSA, communications and media specifically because that's what I'm currently planning on majoring in. And then at the end, I tied in that my dad's a Michigan fan. He actually never went to Michigan, but he grew up in Michigan. So he's a big Michigan fan. So he helped me like kind of at the end talk about Michigan. And so I, I said some kind of thing like, even though I grew like have grown up on the West Coast, I've always been a Wolverine and I am still like the leaders and best attitude. Once again, I'll read all those essays in a different video because I think that would just be very informative. And then I did a letter of continued interest. So I talked about in that letter how all my grades senior year in the fall were like the best they've ever been. I think I got a 4.6 GPA that semester. And I talked about that. And then I talked about opening my own business that I had worked on, which was like a jewelry business. I also talked about taking another um, class at my local community college the next semester that I was gonna be doing, which wouldn't have been on my transcript because I was planning on taking it the next semester and not that it would be. And I personally think that if you don't get in early action and you have to do a letter of continued interest, because if you don't, like, even though they say you don't have to, like, if you're not willing to put in the time to write a 200 word essay, then why would they want you at their school? You know what I mean? Like you obviously, you're, they're not your first choice if you're not even gonna spend 20 minutes writing an essay for them to update them about what you've done since. And so I just think that really helped me. And then a few months later, I got in to the University of Michigan and I could not be more excited to attend in the fall. I literally say that every day, like, ah. I also just wanna say that the college process is crazy and numbers are not everything. I know people that didn't get in to Michigan that literally got into schools that I didn't get into. And I know people that have worse or grades or less activities that got in. You're also looked at like if you fit the criteria of that year. Like I could apply next year and not even make it in because I wasn't didn't fit the criteria that they were looking for that year. Each year they look for different things so that they have a well-rounded school and that if one class that they have like let's say like class of 2023 is really missing like outgoing students then they're wanting for class of 2025 they're like we need to have more outgoing students because we're missing that in class of 2023. I'm not saying that's the case but that's just kind of from my understanding what they do at any college really and so just take everything with what I just said with a grain of salt because it changes year to year and you are not defined by your number or your essays. Everything is holistic. And I actually think of all the schools, Michigan takes their holistic process the most seriously. Their reputation really matters to them. And so I feel like they look at each student with a very clear lens on if they can fit in. You know, they don't want the exact same student basically be yourself because they really want to know who you are as an individual and if you fit into their school. So that was a heck of a lot of information. If you guys have any questions, comment them down below because I actually like usually respond pretty quickly. And I just like helping people because a year ago I was watching these videos religiously because I literally had nothing better to do when we were in quarantine and all that jazz. So I am so excited for all of you that are applying to Michigan and I wish you the best of luck. And I wanna know if you guys end up getting in too, because I'm class of 2025. So I, anyone that is watching this in the future could like, class of 2027 could even be watching this. Like, I don't know. That's crazy, 2027. Like we're in 21 and I still feel like I'm in like 2013. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna go, but make sure to subscribe down below. And I hope each and every one of you has an amazing day. Mwah.